Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a map called Brent Storm. You start off right here just on a little piece of dirt, doesn't seem that significant, it's kind of next to the road, so you can pop onto the road and then go ahead and start driving, and that's kind of interesting right there. So it mixes in the look of a grid with the look of a road, but it doesn't seem like it's flat, there's still like bumps to it and stuff. That's just an interesting look to it. You would think if it has the grid, usually the grid would be a flat surface. So maybe it's like the grid is flat, but then the bumps come from the actual road? I'm not exactly sure, but it looks kind of interesting, and then it stopped doing that. Interesting. Oh, and now we're kicking up sand, even though we're not actually in the sand. So you can see that right there, and actually, if you look closely, you can just barely make out a little bit of the grid. I don't know if that's part of this texture or what, but you see there's just a little bit of a line right there of a grid. I don't know, though, if it's actually the grid we saw earlier or if it's just a kind of a mix of this texture. So right here, I found, like, the edge of the map, and I'm going to try to circle around the whole map, which can be easy, and then it can also not be easy. It kind of depends on the map. Like, if the map is a square on the outskirts, then I just have to remember four 90-degree corners, and then that's a complete circuit of the lap. If it's not that kind of shape, well, it makes it a lot harder. I'm hoping it's going to be kind of like a square, because every map, when it's made, is based on a square section. Like... When you have a base for your map, it's going to be a square no matter what, because video games work in grids in that kind of style. It's not like you could have a map that's a circle. If you do, it's a circle that's on a square grid. Anyways, that right there messes up all of my plans. Aside from the fact that I almost fell in the water, it kind of messes it up because it's not just a square map. It kind of has a section right here where it's not square, and that's basically a dead end to actually keep going. We don't go in the parking lot. We go over here and then keep on driving. You know what? I've been using the stock pickup truck this whole time. I don't know if I really want to use a stock pickup truck anymore, so let's slam it into that tree right ahead of us and then we'll swap it. So, can we hit that tree head on? Yes, with a little bit of air time, that was a perfect crash for what I wanted. Tons of damage to that truck. Passengers, probably injured because that was a high speed crash and we have no airbags. So let's go ahead and swap this for an ETK 800 series and we're going to use the 856 TX. So like, let's say you went to the dealership and you said, I want an ETK 800 series. And then the dealership said, well, what 800 series do you want? And you said, I want the fastest one you got. So they hand you the keys to the 856 TT Sport Plus. You take that for a drive and you say, this is unacceptable. This car is not comfortable at all. And then the sales guy tells you, well, yeah, that's the fastest one. If you want one that has comfort and speed, you'd get the 856 TX because it has the six cylinder engine in all wheel drive and the same suspension as the normal models, but it doesn't have the stiff suspension like the TT Sport and the TT Sport Plus does. So then you take it for a test drive and be like, this is the perfect car for me. I'll take it. Now, if you're YBR, you would be like, I don't care if my spine shatters as I drive this car as long as it got good grip. I mean, to me, a production car cannot be stiff enough. You can put really stiff springs on a production car and make it a little bit too stiff for driving on the streets. But to me, I've never seen a car that comes too stiff from the factory. You know, there might be track day oriented cars that do do that. But I've never actually owned a car that cool. <laughs> My cars are all pretty tame. All two of the ones I've owned and all the other ones I've been in and driven in. None of them have been super track focused like that. Now right here, I think that's actually where we started from. That's why I turned right there. I think that's it because I see a bunch of signs. Easiest way to tell is just keep driving and we should see that little patch of dirt we started in. If I can find that, then I know we went fully around it. Okay, that is the patch of dirt, I'm pretty sure. Easiest way to tell is just sit right here and then hit F7 and it teleports us to where we started and you can see the dirt is still up in the air. So that has to be where we started. Perfect. Now I see a dirt road over here. We're gonna go ahead and check this thing out, see where it goes. Little bumpy. This is why you would get the version without the stiffer suspension. If you have roads that look like this, yeah, don't get the sport model. Your spine really will shatter. This one, though, is perfect for that. It has a nice amount of suspension travel where it absorbs the bumps and you don't break your spine. Talking a lot about breaking spines. I don't know. Suspensions, man. They are so complex. See, my knowledge of actually tuning a suspension is like all about grip. Like, how do you know how to tune a suspension YBR? Well, I played Forza, and I figured out if you make this part bigger and this part smaller, it makes it go understeer or it makes it go oversteer. Like, that's all I know about suspension. Making it soft and comfortable and giving you actual feeling in the steering wheel and all that? Yeah, I have no clue. Whoops! Oh, that's fine. That's fine. My suspension on my roof took care of that. That's called the crumpling roof. 
makes it where you don't feel that as much. And I like the way the car is just eaten the front bumper into the wheel and it keeps driving, like just holding it along like that. I almost want to try to find a tree and scrape it off. That would be really hard to do though because that thing is not sticking out that much more than the wheel. So if I tried to do that, I'd probably end up just crashing the whole front of my car. But oh, do I, oh, perfect, right there. Okay, now we could actually scrape it off. I see a tree. Scrape? Yes, sort of. It took off my uh, fender a little bit, but it mostly did what my goal was. Okay, so right here, we're back at the outskirt of the map. And if I remember correctly, I was going the opposite way of the way I'm going right here. So you can see it in a little bit in both directions, but I don't want to do the whole thing in both directions. So the next time I see a different road, I'll just pop into it. I mean, I'm pretty sure I saw a few different places you could enter this thing as we drove along earlier. There's a road. Slow it way down because that's a tighter corner. There we go. Keep accelerating and see where this thing goes. Nice straightaway right here. Oh, look, there's the dirt road we were just driving on. We just drove right through it. And that right there is going to take us back to the outskirts of the map. So I think if we go this way, we could keep driving along the inside of the map that you haven't seen quite yet. We'll see where this road goes. This might be the road we started on. Nah, it looks a little different. This is a different road. Oh, there we go. Once again, we're crossing over with the dirt road. So let's see, that road over there goes just to the outskirts, so we'll go to this road, see where this one takes us. So we're just exploring this place, like, where does this road go then? How about this road? What about that one? We're going to find the roads and explore them. And I'm probably going to miss some, but I'm going to get the majority, it feels like, because I feel like every time I've driven so far, it's basically been on a new road. So right here, we got two choices. Right there is where we started, so you kind of already saw that road. Have not driven on this one yet, though. And I see a little... Uh, canister and maybe a building as well nope just some canisters go check them out real quickly dirt road that heads to them yeah we don't want to hit those rocks are there any of them set up for a jump unfortunately not it's just kind of a random stack of canisters for who knows what reason just yeah we're gonna put them right here this is where we store them we store them all haphazardly too where one of them is stacked on top of the other one, and we don't care that's the way we do it storing canisters like a disaster so we got another parking lot right here, but it's overgrown with grass. Kind of uh, interesting. So it's like an abandoned parking lot then. Continue along another road. See where this one takes us. I think it might take us to the outskirt of the map. Because I can kind of see the water off to my left. And yeah, this is the outskirt of the map. So we'll go to the left here because I'm pretty sure there was another road we could drive on right after this little outing area. So right here, yep. Accelerate, accelerate, don't go in the dirt. A little bit in the dirt. Only the rear wheels, though. So if I was doing a time trial, I would say that's not a penalty. That is allowed. Although right here, the car is actually pulling to the right. Because I just let it go straight for a second, and I look away from my screen, and I look back, and it's like, wait a minute, I'm off the road. How in the world did that happen? So where are we right now, then? Guess this might be about where we started? If we kept going forward, I'm pretty sure it would be. We're going to double check that. Just real quick. Yep, that's where we started, right there. I can see the little dirt. It's actually nice to have a little marker right there so you know where you started because I can just drive around and be like, yep, that's it. So now let's try to go back to that road we were on with a little bit of a shortcut. The grass right there is actually pretty smooth. First time driving on the grass. And it uh, looks like most of it is all that kind of smoother grass. So if you really want to, you could just drive straight through this map and just avoid the trees and you'll be totally fine. You don't have to worry about difficult terrains or anything like that. And then once again, we have reached the outskirt of the map. So at this point, I feel like I've pretty much driven on most of the roads there are. There might be a few small sections here and there, but just based on what I feel like I've done, it feels like we have done a pretty good amount of it. Front suspension has now been ruined, unfortunately. Can we keep driving though? Yeah, like that'll stop me drive through the grass a little bit more now I could totally use a more off-road dedicated car here but it's it's definitely not necessary I mean yeah this thing does have all-wheel drive which helps it a little bit but the front tire is so ruined I can't even steer to avoid that tree yet it was still going so that gives you a good idea of just how capable this thing is but to really test this let's grab a regular looking Grand Marshal and just try driving that actually not even a regular looking just a regular Grand Marshal and see what it does if we drive through here and the answer is it does swell. Like, 
no issues driving through this. It's a pretty smooth, smooth terrain. And I could destroy this terrain with any car. I could take a bull-eyed race car and I could probably be able to make it through there. It might bottom out here and there, but it would make it. Right, where are those containers at? I want to find those containers and then just crash into them if I can find them. Oh, man. See, now I'm all lost because I'm not sticking to a road. It's like there are containers somewhere around here. I just got to find them. All right, here's a road that we've probably driven on. Yes, we can. I can tell because there are skid marks on the road. And as far as I know, the skid marks only appear from the car on this map. There are no pre-made skid marks. Like a map like um, Hirochi Raceway, that one has skid marks already on the map when you first start up. I mean, it just depends on the map. It makes a lot more sense to have skid marks on a racetrack than on a kind of back road like this. Like, people could race on back roads, sure, but there's going to be a lot more skid marks on a racetrack. So there are containers that I'm looking for. You can crash into them. And the containers seem to work properly. The car deformed just the amount I would expect it to, and it can drive just a little bit. But I don't really want to try to drive this thing anymore. What I want to do is just kind of zoom out on this map and see if there's anything significant looking that we might have missed. So looking around here, it looks like we've driven on most of the roads, although we didn't try driving on the big old mountain over there on the side. So let's just go ahead and fly all the way over here, and then we're going to teleport our car to the top of the mountain and try to drive down it. Now, stock off-road vehicles, we basically have three options. We have the D-Series, the Roamer, and a couple of the h series. Or we could use a modded vehicle like the ETK 6000 and 4000 series. So you can grab the 6200 turbo build and we're going to try to drive this thing down the hill while not damaging it. Which may be possible, may not be possible. And this vehicle may be good for this, it may be awful for this. I truthfully have absolutely no idea because I've never used this vehicle on something like this. Let alone this hill in particular. I'm just trying to find the smoothest path I see and this one looks... Pretty smooth, the suspension's having to do some serious work right there, and it was pretty smooth right there, that looks steep. It looks too steep to try to drive up, but if we hold the brake down right here like this, it should be good just to roll down it. We didn't damage the vehicle, so as far as I'm concerned, that is a success. Under some conditions, I might even consider a damaged vehicle falling down the hill a success. That one though, since it wasn't too difficult, that is a success to me. And I'm going to drive around the hill to try to find the other side of it. I don't want to drive through the trees with this, though, because the trees are pretty dense. Like, if I try to drive this through the trees, it's not going to be pleasant because it's so wide and so long. Trying to find a path through here is not easy, especially with the outside camera. Like, if I was trying to use the outside camera here, I would be really easily frustrated because it's so hard to see what's in front of you with this kind of condition. Like, I'll show you what I mean. So if we were using this camera right here, oh, well, it opened up, so it's nice and easy to see things. But if we're in the uh, tighter area, like over here, you can only kind of see, like right here, this is what I'm talking about. So you can't really see the vehicle. You don't know what's in front of you. So you just have to kind of like spin the camera all over the place to try to see. That is why you want to use the interior camera on something like that usually. And there are trees actually up the hill, but I couldn't see that because I'm not using the interior camera and I kind of got stuck. Now, I'm not seeing any way to actually climb up this thing driving around it. Let me just kind of do a quick fly around, see if I see any less steep areas. Over here might work we got to see if we can get this thing through the trees to that location. If we can't, we could always just get a smaller vehicle. But I said I wanted to use this, so we're going to use it. I right, made it through the trees. And come on, what? That's not even that steep of a hill. How are you falling? Okay, maybe the 6200 Turbo isn't that good. Let me look at the um, suspension on this thing and see what kind of suspension this thing's running. I just wanted to move it to a flat surface. So the main thing is, what axle do we have? We have a locked differential there okay and then what about the rear we have a locked differential on both the front and rear you would think that'd be enough to be able to climb that interesting what if we used a normal version of the vehicle like the 6200 base i would think this one would be worse because it has less power right but i swear earlier when i was using this vehicle it would be able to do something like this so let's see here yeah how ironic is that the one with more power is less capable for something like this now, actually climbing the hill, we're going to want to go this way because that's where the smooth area is. And if this thing fails, I think we could do this with like a D-Series or a Roamer. And we'll try it. But actually, so far, so good. This is way better than the Turbo for some reason. Maybe it has different gearing on the differentials that allows it to be just a little bit better off-roader. Not sure. Yeah, right here, though, I don't think it's going to make it. 
Pretty sure a D series could though, so we're gonna actually bring this back a little bit to make sure we have room to get up to speed. So we'll just uh, actually, instead of falling, we'll teleport because if we let it fall, it'll fall off of the hill, and that's not what we want. So we'll grab a D series, and we're gonna just go with the D35 Pig. Pretty capable off-road machine. It's more for crawling over like rocks and stuff, but I think it could get up a steep hill, no problem. Oh yeah, easy. A little too easy, almost. I went so fast I could have flown off the edge. So with the actual vehicle really good at off-roading, you could definitely climb to the top of that hill because I started basically at the road and only swapped when the other vehicle wasn't good enough. Now what about those hills over there? Can we climb those ones? Well, let's find out. First we gotta get to it, which we're gonna probably do in the most violent way possible. Actually, that wasn't so violent at all. Can you flip upright? No, though. I was hoping it would flip upright on me. Now the other ones look a little bit steeper and I'm assuming there's not going to be a proper way up them like this one because I can kind of see around the whole thing from afar and the whole thing just looks steep. So we're going to start off by trying to drive up it in a stupid crazy way. We're going to drive like this. We're going to just hit it on the edge and then, nope, I was hoping it would somehow bounce up to the top. And okay, actually over here though, there might be a way up. Now that I actually saw it from that angle, that was one of the few angles I couldn't see it at from before. So it looks like we could definitely drive up this way. I see no reason why not. It doesn't look as steep as the other one even. And we have a pretty capable vehicle. Maybe a little bit steeper actually on that section we're coming up to. But if I have a little bit of momentum going into it, yeah, no problem. Oh, a little bit of a problem. It is steep on the edge. Come on, don't drown. Oh, we're screwed. We're screwed. It's drowned. Anyways, I think that will do it for this video. Till next time, this has been YBR, and just as a quick note, you can also climb up onto that one. I like the fact that there are sections made where you can actually get up those. So, anyways, as I was saying, till next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya.